File 1357 enacts the Castle Doctrine, providing for the justifiable use of deadly force in self-defense and makes a number of changes to the laws relating to firearms involving the reporting of data, the conducting of background checks, the operation of transferee permits, the seizure authority of the government, and the validity of permits to carry from other states. When I look at my toddler, as a mom, I can't take our safety for granted. Despite all my training, my best chance for protecting my family and myself may be the use, education, and training of a firearm. I am not ashamed to say that there have been times that I have feared for my safety walking to my car, even in my own home. Almost as frightening as the thought that I could be prosecuted for defending myself or my family according to the current laws and their unrealistic restraints. No one is more concerned about the safety and protection of Minnesota citizens than I am as one of our state's prosecutors. There is simply no need to expand our laws in Minnesota dealing with the right of self-defense and the justified use of deadly force. Our current laws adequately protect our law-abiding citizens. Let's be perfectly clear. Today in Minnesota, a person may use deadly force without an obligation to retreat if this is done to prevent the commission of a felony in their home. When a person is not in their home, they can rightfully protect themselves by using deadly force to avert a threat of death or great bodily harm to themselves or another, provided that they first attempt to avoid the danger if reasonably possible. I really, I think it's unfortunate that people have so, live with so much fear that they would think that they actually needed something like this to protect themselves. I think that's, that's a really sad statement about about our state. I think it's a really st a sad statement about any state where people actually think that they need this kind of, of protection from other human beings, um, um, that, they, that they, would, they would not feel comfortable unless they had this language. But what I can say is that I know a lot of people are going to feel extremely uncomfortable if this language should pass because they will be in fear. They will be living in fear. I, I don't know very much about guns. I don't have a gun. Um, I wouldn't permit one in my home. Um, I don't like guns. However, we have a constitution, and the Second Amendment has to be interpreted in a way that is meaningful. And I think that's what this bill is about. It's making sure that the Second Amendment is interpreted in a meaningful way and that the right to carry a gun or to bear arms is meaningful and not diminished in any way by government action unless it's absolutely necessary. And I think that this bill is an attempt to balance that interest and make sure that the Second Amendment is a meaningful right and not one that is diminished in any way. And for me, this bill is also about ownership and private property. That's equally as important in my view as the gun rights. That your home is your castle. That's the whole name of the bill, the castle doctrine. It's because private property is supposed to mean something, and government should not intrude on that either. This is about the concept of limited governments. There, there are limits to what we can do and what we can regulate as government. And the rights of citizens and residents have to come first, unless there's a very good reason for the government to intervene.